I've got a few articles here. Actually, I had a, a few people write in, and I'm going to read to you what they wrote here. It goes, um, this is from Jeff. Matt, I loved all your PEP segments. Preparedness eliminates panic is what PEP stands for. Throughout the years, these are great tips and practices for when I'm at home. But what about if the worst were to happen when I'm at, and when I'm physically stuck at work during the day? I work in a medium office and don't have a lot of personal space. What are some essential must-haves that I can store at work in a pad locker, uh, padlocked locker, that can buy me some survival, medical, and security time until somehow uh, get home to my prep room? Love the show, Jeff and Temple. I like Jeff. Yeah. Jeff's a cool guy. Everybody likes Jeff, you know? Jeff's he just asks, one of those kind of guys, yeah? He asks a very good question, and, and that question doesn't really apply just to the workplace. It applies to everywhere you go, whether it's a movie theater or a grocery store. You have to be aware of your surroundings and know what you can do with your surroundings, right? I, yes, correct. I had a show one time, and I did this, where I talked about the bug-out body, the bug-out bag, the bug out vehicle and a bug out location. It all starts with your bug out body. So Jeff, let's start off with this. There are just some things that have to be on your person no matter what. Now the gun is in question due to the fact if you're at a work facility that doesn't permit guns through its policy manual, 30-06, 30-07, whatever, okay? So let's keep that out of the picture since uh, that happens with most of the people, especially federal employees and like that. But a bug out body, your EDC, your everyday carry, there are some things that you just not leave home without them. And Mark, interject if I miss one. The first thing is going to be pocket knife. And this is not in numerical order, by the way. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. Pocket knife. Couple pocket knives. I've got a pocket knife for cutting boxes and I got a pocket knife for cutting other things, if you know what I mean. Okay? I got a defensive pen. Not only it's a defensive pen, but it's a pen I can write things down with information. Um, phone numbers. You want phone numbers on you that may be in your phone that if your battery goes dead, you can use a landline, something like that. Somebody told me that a long time ago. Spe any other special numbers that you may need, keep it in your wallet. Uh, flashlight. If you're able to keep a flashlight on your person, that would be good. So look Talking about flashlight. You're not going to use the flashlight just to blind the guy, which you can have. And some flashlights have the strobe device, which are distracting and can cause issues. But try to get some of those that have the DNA sample grabber or the attitude adjustment. <laughs> yeah, right. Sharp, pointy <laughs> edge that can really rake some guy's face right off. Absolutely. And Mark, I, a long time ago, I bought a Surefire flashlight that had just those components. But the me, Defender. Let me tell you how far these lights have gone. Those lights back in the day cost hundreds of dollars. You can get some killer flashlights, extremely cheap, that are brighter than the best ones just a few years ago. And they're getting smaller and smaller. So you can find something that works for you. Me personally, I think a push button on the back is best for lots of purposes. There's other flashlights with on-off switches that are better in different positions, but the one, the push button in the rear has a tendency not to get hit by accident. You have most control on it, and uh, it's just in a better spot than other buttons. So you got the basics there. Now, what if he's in the office? Is there anything I'm missing? Uh, a belt. Absolutely. Got to have a good belt. I was just talking to a couple of guys at the shop about belts. If you're going to be this type of person who's going to be prepared, and if you carry a gun, you've got to have a good belt. You can't have one of these loop-de-loop -loop belts that stretch with the weight of your gun starts flopping around. You need a tight, secure belt, Okay. It could be a Velcro strip, it could be a double-lined leather belt, but one way or another, it's got to be a, a sturdy belt, okay? And a belt, you can take it off with a metal buckle, and you can do lots of damage, right? A metal buckle is a very good thing. You can use it for a whip, you can use it for a, uh, a grab, a snatch, a choke. You, you, not, they're Drink it. fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that, that pretty much covers the body, but I wrote a list of things here that in the office itself you could potentially use that are common and then camouflage out in the plane in the open, okay? Pointed scissors. A lot of these scissors nowadays have the rounded edges because they're afraid you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> well, they still hurt. <laughs> you're going to beat them to death to the other side instead of poking them with a sharp edge. So pointed scissors if you can find them anymore. Letter openers. Those are great. Got a couple on my desk. 
Um, chopsticks. Mark, explain that one. You're you're a fan of chopsticks. I love chopsticks, and and I travel with chopsticks. Every time I deploy, I've got two sets of tactical chopsticks. I didn't even know they made tactical chopsticks <laughs> until you gave them to me. K Bar makes these black hard fiberglass chopsticks. They're brilliant, and what they can be used for are pressure points, grabbing, uh, putting people into wrist locks, etc. But they also stab very well, and they can cause a puncture that doesn't close very well. Women with a lot of hair can put them up in their hair, too. Exactly, yes. They know it's coming, right? Yes, and, you know, it's a, a food item, like a spoon, a fork. So they actually go through TSA rather well. There you go. And I've got a couple sets left. If anybody needs them, just give me a call. We talked about the folding knife, pen, screwdriver. Depending on the type of work that you do, you may have screwdrivers. If you're an IT guy working on stuff, pulling the panels off the computers, you got a screwdriver handy, that's a great little tool right there. A pair of pliers. Uh, having a phone available, smartphone, quick information. I was talking about this before. You know how everybody's saying, oh, there's something going on, there's something going on, and people have all these smartphones. Why couldn't they have hooked up to a central facility, a, a FaceTime element, where everybody turns their, cam their phones on to FaceTime to a certain location, and they've got cameras all in the building, so that law enforcement can go to the monitor and say, oh, we got a vantage point from every freaking direction. How would that work? Well, I think it is working right now, but uh, people need to be aware of that. Uh, we did a, a school project where they're actually doing that. They've uh, given the passcode to the local police department that will actually tap into the, the school's um, inner uh, network. And so once the call is made, then the dispatch or the, the people monitoring it can actually do that on their phones. I'm just a blunt instrument, man. I don't do this high-tech stuff. I'm just not smart enough for this stuff. So when I hear the gunshots going, that's where I'm headed. It's a... It's a you, are, gunshot... are you, you're saying you're not going to wait to make sure that the no. scene is safe before you go into the fight like some other people? No. Gunshots are a beacon or a, a, they're a calling or a sonar to me. They're like, there's where I got to go. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I got here also a broomstick. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever used a scream of sticks or a tonfuzz or anything like that, but if you get a broomstick, break that sucker in half, you got, or you can leave it in one piece and use it as a bow staff, but I like a scream of sticks that just a lot of stuff you can do to fend somebody off. But you got to you gotta remember this. You got to make the decision. If there's a threat in your location, they say, run, hide, or fight. Well, I threw the first two out, okay? <laughs> because I'm not going to run out of a building when I know my coworkers are there and here I am on a street and everybody's getting bloodied up. It's just, I just don't work that way. So if you're going to do it, you got to make the decision. If I'm going to carry a stick into a gun battle, you're pro. What was that story? That guy, he changed, charged that guy with the rifle and he was screaming at him. The guy dropped his gun. I, I don't. That was I, one of those most recent terrorist attacks. That. Anyway, it's, they're not used to that. They're not used to you going towards the, the threat. But I didn't say that. It's my personal opinion. Always listen to law enforcement. Hide or run, hide or fight, whatever it takes. With the broom stick, and, and I know we're talking about the body before we go to the, the uh, bug out bag, but with the broom stick, you can also use it to brace your door. If you're inside of a, a room somewhere and you're trying to barricade your door, there are certain door handles that you can use the broom stick to go in between the, the door knobs mm -hmm. and actually brace it in that, that way. You just have to study your location. Okay, we're talking... Uh, medical supplies as well. Why don't you give a quick few things that you could use, Mark, since you're pretty sharp on that kind of stuff. Well, in, in a crisis situation like that, active, active shooter or just a crisis, you need to know how to stop the bleed because most people just bleed out and that's the main cause of, of death. So pressure dressings, know your power point, or pressure points, and not power yeah, points, yeah. Like death by power point, right? Uh, but then also uh, have a tourniquet available. That way you can immediately apply or self-aid uh, put it on yourself and then deal with the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. But I recommend that everybody, if you're even thinking about this, be prepared. Go to get a CPR class, get a first responder class, an oxygen provider class. Red Cross Healthcare does it. And so um, be medically trained. And the more trained and prepared you are, the better you're going to handle under, under the situation. Okay. Um, we talked about the bug out body which will get us to our yeah, bug out bag okay. okay yes and, uh, everything okay Kincaid how are we doing over there Kincaid yes. having a great conversation or what? Are getting set up. okay let's go on but uh, bug out body 
Uh, the bug out body we just talked about. Now we're at the bug out bag. Uh, what kind of more things can we put in our bug out bag that we could potentially use at work that won't get us in trouble? Okay, good question. I had Water, food, map. Uh, it, it, de it depends. Jeff, I'm responding to your letter here. It, it all depends on your situation. For example, I'll give you an example of what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, yes, well, he, uh, this, People this live the first week different ways, back. different places, different locations, do different jobs. Set your bug out right. bag in accordance to right, what you, you need to get you to where you got to go, what you need to have s to survive, and what you foresee in the future may be causing a problem. So I can't really answer that in detail because every person is different in what they need. I know my bag may be different than your bag. Maybe different than somebody else's bag. It all depends on how much you want to carry and, and what your environment is. I always plan on shoot, move, and communicate. With shooting, you're going to need either a backup weapon, if the situation dictates, your lifestyle dictates. Have a backup weapon. Have plenty of ammunition. Hopefully, they're both uh, the same caliber, so you can use the ammunition for both your primary and your alternate. Have a backup knife. Uh, you're going to need fire. So have a fire starter, have a backup uh, a lighter. That way you can use it as a s signaling device, perhaps, mm -hmm. or to cauterize wound or sterilize. There's a lot of things you can use with fire. I'm rambling and choking because we're under time. But then have a signaling device, have a whistle, have a mirror, something that, that can be seen easily mm -hmm. to give your location if you have to. A whistle is always a good thing to carry also. I was going to say that, yeah. Um, Draw attention. First aid, have more pr pressure dressings, have your medication if you have prescription medications, have a, a, another prescription eyeglass if you have to. Um, have a, a, one of those survival blankets, so if you are on a scene and somebody's in shock, you, then you can apply a blanket to them, whether it's a survival blanket or, or something else. Water, you said water is very important. Water is key, yeah. water, food. Contact information for... In, in case uh, somebody finds you or finds the bag, then they... I'll tell you what, I just had I just had a text from somebody in California who was going through the earthquakes and was asking, cool. um, what should I have in my car? And I said, well, absolutely water and food. And they said they got the water, but what kind of food should I keep in, in my vehicle in that time? See, here's another example of, depending on where you live in your environment. Here we have earthquake area in California, so you might want to load your car up with something different than what I may load up here. So, what kind of food would be good? Something that's easy to access doesn't spoil right it, absolutely you got to think about the heat inside the car but some, some of these things are really good and a lot of people talk about protein bars and stuff like that which will dehydrate you they will give you a lot of good protein and give you that energy for a short burst but you want a little bit more in the long term so i prefer things like canned chicken canned tuna You've got the high protein, but you still also have fluids with that. Mm -hmm. They're small, they're portable, and they will, they will last a long time. A lot of people who say, oh, I survived in the desert, I got lost, and I only had a packet of creamer. Well, that didn't save you. Your mindset saved you, and that made <laughs> you feel good. So, I usually get a, um, that Chef Boyardee uh, ravioli or some type of pasta with the pop lids. That's well, great. Because last because I'm thinking the carbs. And, keep and it's got a pop lid that you can also yeah. use for a, you can sharpen one edge for a knife if you have to. or a, Not the worst than having a can of food and you got to gnaw it open with your teeth. That's <laughs> just not a good thing to do. Okay. Let me, let, let's sidebar here and let's go to another topic real quick because I thought this was pretty interesting. There was this um, article, you've heard about the masked gunman who um, did that shootout in the, at the courthouse in Dallas. Let me read to you this, this article and I got an opinion on this. Let's see here. Mask gunman killed in shootout at Cordes, Dallas. An army veteran wearing a mask and carrying more than 150 rounds of ammunition for his high-powered rifle was shot dead Monday after he opened fire outside a busy federal courthouse in downtown Dallas. Federal officers killed 22-year-old Brian Isaac Clyde after he approached an entrance to the Earl Campbell Federal Building and began shooting. Glass panes were shattered in a revolving door during the gunfight, but no one else was seriously hurt. <clears throat> It's a lot of rounds, a lot of rounds at his disposal, large, powerful weapon, blah, 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 the FBI said. Clyde's attack began about 8.40 a.m., and three officers from the Federal Protective Service who were stationed at the building confronted him. DeSarno and other officers praised the courage of the new, at the news conference. But for the actions of the Federal Protective Service officers, this likely would have been a very deadly incident. Officials are still trying to determine a motive 
but said there was nothing to indicate the presence of any other shooters or threats. Then it goes down here. The Dallas Morning News reported that one of its photographers, Tom Fox, was outside the building and witnessed the shooter open fire. Fox said the masked man got out of his car and began running, but stopped to pick up a loaded magazine he dropped on the sidewalk. He then began shooting at the courthouse. Here's what I wanted to say. After reading this, nobody's injured. The only person that's dead is the shooter. Cool. He gets out of his car, drops ammo. He just starts shooting at the glass. I say suicide by cop. I hope so. I I hope he went out like that. Except he if you read the article further, there were a device, two devices in his vehicle. So bomb disposal had to come in and do two detonations on his vehicle. So that could have caused more injury, more damage to local people passing by. I don't know the intention, and it's a, a well-written article by the Temple Daily Telegram. However, uh, you know, there's a lot of missing pieces to this article, and we don't know the whole situation. But suicide by cop? Why do that? Why don't you just, if you're a nutcase... <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it. Well, it, 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 it well, upsets what I'm, get, what I'm getting at it is this. He drops his magazine. Man, if you're serious, you're not going to drop your mag. Okay? You look at the picture of this guy, and you can just tell he's like a loser. He drops his man. Look at the rifle he's using. L look what he's got on it. There's no sights on it. Oh, he's got a optic on it. Is that what it is? He's a chucklehead. He's a chucklehead. He's wearing body armor. And so it, that it, tells me he wants to put up a fight. He doesn't want to die, or I else say, he wouldn't put a body armor on. I say suicide by cop with a blaze of glory. He wanted to go out and make... He's a loser. Wanted to make himself feel good for one last time. Have a firefight. Didn't want to hurt anybody. I don't know about the car thing, but I think the guy was getting himself killed. Because if you're trying to hurt people, that's not how to do it. No, no, no. And, and the guy in the article, it says that he was only in the military for about two and a half years. He ranked out at, at PFC. He probably and did a lot of KP. Duty. We have a good acronym for PFC, which I can't use over the air. <laughs> but um, okay, yeah, well. I, I'm, I'm glad we had good law enforcement there that made a decision and terminated the threat. I'm glad. Kincaid, I want you to get ready for a, a commercial break here, but I wanted to read something here. I thought this was interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, for all of you who like to eat meat rare, you may want to consider getting it well done. Woman killed after falling into meat grinder plant. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> it's sad, man. Authorities say a woman was killed when she fell into a meat grinder at a processing plant in northern Pennsylvania. It's not clear what caused the accident at the Economy Locker Storage Company in Muncie. The, um, the county coroner's office said 35-year-old Jill Greniger apparently fell around 11.30 a.m. Monday. Her body was found by a co-worker who heard strange noises coming from the commercial. She, all I'm telling you is, for a while, just order your meat well done. <laughs> Man, this is not a laughing matter. That's, that, that's a 35-year-old lady, probably a mother, has a family. She's working hard to support her family because that company didn't have proper OSHA prevention. And safety prevention. That woman, that is so sad, man. You're right. It is sad, dude. It's very sad. That's very sad. I, my heart goes out to her. She's a Mark, hard you working any, person. You got any final words before uh, we? Oh, uh, I got a lot of words, break. man. <laughs> Say something oh. positive, would you? Say something positive. Be careful with fire this this season. And again, if you want to volunteer for the fire department, please come in. Uh, we need you. We need your help and your support. Do your service to the community. God bless America, damn it. Sounds great. Well, I, I swore, I'm sorry. Okay, let's take us out with a break. When we come back, we're going to have the delicious Janae Goodman talking about cool snacks and drinks for the summer to keep you cool. I think that's going to be cool. So we'll see you on the other side. <laughs>